for a Chevy Performance U.S. Nationals, Rick Snavely became the seventh different winner in seven consecutive races on the NHRA JNA Service Pro Modified Tour. Can that kind of parity continue between supercharged nitrous oxide injected and turbocharged entries? We'll find out at Charlotte. Within the NHRA is a class of car that defies convention. Door slammers with nitrous, turbos, blowers. These are the Mavericks. This is Pro Mod. Welcome everybody to one of the most incredible drag strips ever constructed. It's Bruton Smith's amazing Z-Max Dragway here in Concord, North Carolina. Site of multiple world records on the National Hot Rod Association Mellow Yellow Drag Racing Tour. But today during the JNA Services Pro Modified Battle, we could see one of the most unusual races of the season. Why? A brand new racing surface here at the track known as Charlotte could indeed throw a curveball to all the drivers who are coming into this, the third race from the end of the season in the 2015 tour. Now bear in mind the JNA service team itself with sophomore driver Steve Whiteley has already produced some exceptional runs during qualifying and that's to their advantage. Why? Because so far in 2015 not a single driver has managed to win more than one race in this tough tour. How tough was it? Reigning world champion Ricky Smith in the far lane didn't qualify. We come here and just look like an idiot, you know I mean? I don't know how to calm the car down no more, and I calm my car down, but it's, it's sad to have this kind of facility, and the people have tried here, but buddy, they, they should have asked somebody about how to pour the concrete here. And Ricky wasn't the only one. Near lane, Mike Costolana, far lane, Don Walsh, neither one makes the cut. When you're in a championship position, you need to race like your championship material, and we need to find that again. We've lost it, we need to find it. But not everybody had problems. For the third consecutive event, Colin Abelushi from Dubai leads the field with his supercharged Camaro with a three hundredths of a second advantage over Danny Rowe and Steve Matusik. In fact, our first battle in round number one of eliminations will feature two past NHRA national event winners, Pete Farber's bright red supercharged Dodge Daytona and the wild turbocharged 68 Firebird of the inimitable Clint Satterfield and his crew chief, Bob Gardner. Here's Joe Costello. Clint, your car is called the Turbo Pig. Tell us of the origin of the name. We were heading to a race in Boise, Idaho, and Bob and my dad and I, we were uh, all just cutting up in the truck because it's a, we have to weigh a lot because the turbo cars are heavy. And whenever we're on the starting line, he goes, how are you feeling? I always go, wee! <laughs> so we thought about the, that pig that has the pinwheels, and we figured we put turbos on the end of the pinwheels, and that's our name. We're the Turbo Pig. <laughs> the New Mexican qualified well at this event. In fact, he has lane choice over Farber in the CRC Brake Clean 69 Dodge Daytona Charger here in this first matchup. The Charger is the last to stage. And a monstrous hole shot to Satterfield. Farber has problems, but he never would have been able to get around the Turbo Pig on that race. Great job for Satterfield. Clint Satterfield, round one victory. Some say the first round is the toughest. Oh, it's always really tough. We had to do a motor change after Q3 and uh, had a lot of help from a lot of guys. We got the car in here and it made a good pass. We're very happy. That'll bring up rookie sensation Troy Coughlin Jr. in the bright yellow jigs.com Steve Petty tuned twin turbocharged Chevy Corvette. Well, looking at qualifying, you can definitely tell that the right lane's got uh, the best success rate as far as making it from A to B. But, you know, the, there's, there's some different tricks you can run to get the left lane to work for you. So, really, both of them will work, but I think the right lane's predominantly going to be the lane of choice. Well, Coughlin qualified in the top half of the field and has lane choice here over Canadian Eric Latino and his supercharged green Camaro in the left lane. And as you can see, Coughlin Jr. has chosen that favored right lane. Finally, the two stage up and they're ready. And Coughlin has problems. Latino makes an arrow straight pass in the supposedly inferior left lane and wins it, equaling his qualifying elapsed time. You have been running 592s and really got consistency on your side. Yeah, well, the guys got to handle the car. We came here three weeks ago and tested so we can get ahead of the game. And uh, 
So we were running 85s and 86s in different conditions, but 93s and 93s and 2s is pretty consistent. Smart drivers tested the facilities at which they will later race. It obviously paid off for the Canadian. Here is Steve Matusek in the Agave Underground Tequila Supercharged Camaro and Billy Glidden's nitrous oxide injected Mickey Thompson Tires and Wheels Ford Mustang. This Ford versus Chevrolet battle will have the crowd on its feet. But a red light start for Matusik throws away what would have been a basic guaranteed victory. Glidden shakes the tires and coasts across the finish line, a 10 second winner. Here with Steve Matusik, ran a mid 590, but the red light was on, foul start by just a couple of foul. I, I got nothing. Got Got nothing. I can't believe it went red, but what are you going to do? I guess my ankle's better. Matusik referring to an injured ankle from earlier this year. Here's a guy who was leading points not too long ago, Bob Ram in his Corvette out of Michigan. But after a failure to qualify at the NHRA U.S. Nationals, he is scrambling. We struggled in Indy, but, you know, they're back on their game over here. We've had some fuel pressure issues, but, you know, we hurt the motor on the last pass, and so we got a new one in there, and so we're, you know, we're optimistic about first round. Ram will be up against the patriarch of the JNA Services Racing Team. That's Jim Whiteley out of Colorado and his supercharged Yenko Chevelle. Nitrous oxide injection and over 900 cubic inches makes on a 526 cubic inch supercharged Chevy. The blown Chevelle is out in front and a close race it was, but believe it or not, Whiteley takes Ram out in the opening round in a close race. Take a look. It was 15 thousandths of a second difference at the finish line. How do you think this affects your championship hopes with two races to go? Well, I go back to saying, I mean, you know, I look at last year where we were and to now, you know, my goal was finishing the top 10 and, you know, obviously everybody's here to win the championship, but, you know, we'll take what we get. Still to come in the continuation of round number one here at Charlotte, North Carolina, Khaled Belushi, the number one qualifier and history chief, Ace Manzo, are getting ready. This exclusive coverage of the NHRA GNA Service Pro Mod Drag Racing Series is brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. By Precision Turbo and Engine, the winning edge in boosted performance. And by Aeromotive, serious fuel systems for Pro Mods to Hot Rods and everything in between. We continue with round number one from Bruton Smith's fabulous Z-Max Dragway in Concord, North Carolina. We've got a relatively warm racing surface so far has given us a variety of upsets. Here comes the wild CTSB Cadillac of Stephen Whiteley taking on home state veteran Chip King and his supercharged Dodge Daytona. Whiteley qualified in the top half of the field, running in the 5.8 second zone with that wild supercharged Caddy. But King knows how to put down the big numbers. A monstrous hole shot for Whiteley, and then King's car heads for the wall. It's basically a free ride for Stephen Whiteley, who advances with one of his best runs of the weekend. Stephen Whiteley in the Cadillac CTSV going to the second round with a clean victory. That was that was something else. It uh, moved around on me a little bit, had to pedal it. I don't know what the other guy ran, but uh, it wasn't the prettiest run we ever made, but uh, we made it. Here's the brand new Agave Underground Tequila supercharged Chevy Corvette of Californian Danny Rowe. That's Crew Chief Jimmy Rector walking to the back of the machine. He will take on one of only two nitrous oxide injected race cars that qualified here at Charlotte. This is Dan Stevenson out of Chicago in the orange, yellow, and white Camaro powered by a rear and Morrison 900 plus cubic inch engine. Problems for both drivers. Rowe will advance. But man, the Camaro pilot in the far lane was all over the place. Rowe barely dips into the five second zone. The car went out there, it was shaking so bad when it hit second gear, I couldn't even see where I was going. It was just a blur. I was just about to get out of it. It cleaned up and it went right down the racetrack. It was just not going with, thank God for that one. That was a tough round. And now the marquee matchup of this drag race. Troy Coughlin Sr.'s twin turbocharged Jegs.com Corvette takes on Mike Janis and the Jansen Racing Engine Supercharged Camaro. Janis is currently number one in points. Coughlin is number two. Go figure, we got to run Troy again first round, you know. Um, it's a hot racetrack. We just got to stick to our game plan and try and make the car go down and not set the world on fire and uh, see what happens. Round by round and uh, don't worry, I'm feeling the pressure. 
Coughlin must win this battle. He's four rounds behind Janice coming into this event for the World Championship battle. And Janice's car doesn't even move. Coughlin wins it. He runs his quickest pass of the event and top speed of the meet to boot. Poor Mike Janice sitting on the starting line with a car that apparently broke right at the head of the throttle. I just went down on the, get down on the two step and it just shut right off on me. Uh, something in the ignition or what have you but uh, hurts pretty bad that's all I can say but uh, we'll come back for St. Louis and do it all over again meanwhile take a ride on the 253.99 mile per hour rocket ship of Troy Coughlin off to the second round is pretty exciting and to take out Janice in the first round wow that's a feat itself big opportunity for the points well that's what that's why we're all here for sure and it's pretty exciting for us like it was exciting for him at Indy, so pretty cool. Number one qualifier Khaled Al Belushi in the AAP supercharged Chevy Camaro stages up against Mike Knowles in his Al Capone themed Tim McAmos race car supercharged Ford Mustang. Belushi enjoyed a 12 hundredths of a second advantage over Knowles in qualifying, but a red light start by Knowles ends the race. And Belushi has problems. Knoll's 5.96 second run would have been a winner had he not left the starting line eight thousandths of a second too soon. Belushi will be one of five supercharged entries to advance to round two. There are two turbo cars left, and poor Billy Glidden's the last of the nitrous racers. Meanwhile, in the pits, Clint Satterfield and crew chief Bob Gardner are getting ready. Stay with us. We're back in Concord, North Carolina with round number two of this NHRA JNA Service Pro Mod Drag Racing Series event. Only three races to go in the 2015 series. And here at the beginning of round number two, it's past world champ Khaled Abelushi and his supercharged AAP Camaro taking on New Mexican Clint Satterfield. He and his crew chief Bob Gardner have been thrashing during this event, but the 68 Pontiac Firebird in the far lane has the power to race right alongside the past world titleist. Whoa, Satterfield gets sideways, and that's all she wrote. A solid five-second run for the driver from the United Arab Emirates. We'll take a look at the replay and see just how wild Clint Satterfield's run was on the right side of your screen, completely sideways. But he saved the car before it headed out of its lane. Khaled Abelushi taking off the helmet, going to the semifinals, 598-2. Looks like Frank's working the tune-up. Yeah, we've been... I told you we've been struggling a little bit to make the car consistent and the, the track, I think something going on, a lot of the, lot of the post stock don't make it down, we, we slow down the car, but thanks to God, we make it down. The track temperature is currently 122 degrees and that's hot in anybody's book. Backing up from the tire heating burnout is the green supercharged Chevy Camaro from Canada driven by Eric Latino, who this weekend produced a tremendous memorial to one of the greatest pro stock and pro modified drivers in NHRA history. I met Joe Lapone back in 2012, and uh, just as a social thing, one of my sales reps was his neighbor. We became friends and started crossing past at a lot of races. So he joined our team in 2014 of June, and he just started developing, you know, throat issues and got cancer in his tongue and took off a lot of treatment. And Joe had been with us, so sick and all, he came. It didn't matter what kind of shape he was in. He always made made the made the race day. Passed away about two months ago. So. I put together kind of a celebration of life and brought his old uh, competitors or colleagues out and uh, they're talking stories about what Joe used to do, what they used to do with Joe. And good guy, we're really going to miss him. But, uh, we have him here with us at this race and uh, hopefully he's we'll going to be with us forever. Latino's Camaro, sponsored by Ultra Low Emission by Global Emissions Systems Incorporated, will take on one of the toughest racers out there, the man who must keep advancing to earn more points, Troy Coughlin Sr. in the Jenks.com Corvette. A great race, but Coughlin's Corvette is on fire. Latino gets the win, but Coughlin manages to snuff out the flames with the onboard fire extinguishing system and gets the Corvette stopped. Wow, what a blaze. Let's go on board. And a great example of just how little fire got into the cockpit. That's the way these cars are designed. Wow, what a ride. Troy, take us through what happened in the car. Well, it seemed like everything is pretty normal and uh, 
the car took off from the starting line. It was running pretty strong, and you could feel it kind of nosing over a little bit, and then it caught on fire, and you see the flames starting to travel down underneath the scoop and stuff like that. But and then it was had let off at that point. But uh, but then just got on the fire extinguishers, got on the brakes, tried to get over to the wall to kind of keep away from the track, so it keeps all the oil that does come out of it off the track, and just trying to we don't make a mess out there. But looks like we did a little bit. A lot of damage to that car. Bear in mind, the next event is only one week away in St. Louis. Meanwhile, the next pair rolls to the starting line for the tire heating burnouts. It's Jim Whiteley's JNA Services Chevelle taking on the brand new Agave Underground Tequila Corvette driven by Danny Rowe. Side by side, supercharged methanol burning Chevys. Rowe is the last one to stage. They leave the line together. But Whiteley runs into tire shake problems. Danny Rowe, not the prettiest run he's made, but it's a winning run and good enough. Crew Chief Jimmy Rector, who tunes Danny Rowe's machine, will accept all accolades. You know, it's really, really tough out there right now, so it's making it really competitive. Um, but it's exciting. It's exciting racing. The guys did a great job. I'm proud to be wearing the JNA hat. I'm sorry to have to put him in the trailer, but that's racing. That's why we're out here. We're out here to kick some butt and have some fun, and we're doing exactly what we have to do with this Agave Underground tequila car. Thank you very much. Shannon Glidden reaches into the cockpit of her husband's Mickey Thompson Tires and Wheels Ford Mustang Nitrous car, the last of its type remaining, as he races the youngest qualified driver in this field, Stephen Whiteley in the JNA Service CTSV Supercharged Cadillac. Nose to nose, the supercharged caddy wins it as Glidden apparently ran into mechanical problems near the finish line. That'll be the first semifinal round appearance ever for young Stephen Whiteley. And at the finish line, there's the Cadillac on the fastest winning run of the round. The semifinal round will feature something we haven't seen in a long time. Four supercharged methanol burners going at it. The nitrous cars and turbo cars are history. Stay with us for the final four. This exclusive coverage of the NHRA JNA Service Pro Modified Drag Racing Series is brought to you by the School of Automotive Machinists. Education at full speed. By RPM, the real Pro Mod Association. And by JNA Service, a leader in oil well and gas well servicing and exploration. Welcome back to Z Max Dragway in Concord, North Carolina. Four cars remain. All of them are supercharged methanol burning passenger vehicles battling for this NHRA Pro Modified title. It's Stephen Whiteley in his first ever semifinal in his CTSV supercharged Cadillac taking on Danny Rowe in the Agave Underground Corvette. A great drag race, but it's the Corvette pulling it out by a car length. Danny Rowe with his quickest run of eliminations advances with that crew chief, Jimmy Rector, alongside. On board with Rowe on the victorious pass. Really straight as an arrow. Very little effort needed by Rowe to guide the car down the quarter mile. And who will face Danny Rowe in the final round? Well, we had three different countries represented in this four-car semifinal. And this race will pit Khaled Al Belushi from the United Arab Emirates in the far lane against Canadian Eric Latino. The crew chief battle is between Ace Manzo and Al Billis. Belushi will be the last to stage. And they're ready. The Drag Race Canada sponsored Camaro scores the victory and goes to the final round. Considering that Eric Latino and his crew has one of the most extensive travel schedules on the NHRA JNA Pro Modified Series Tour, this has to feel good. You know when you gotta go on th thank all your sponsors? Well this weekend is for Papa Cooks. Papa Cooks, you don't know who he is, that he was the founder of Cooks Custom Headers. One of my biggest customers passed away three weeks ago. We had all their staff here. We had a big memorial, a big celebration for Pops. And I told Pops this one's going to be for him. So hopefully we can get there. Pro Mod 101 is brought to you by Precision Turbo and Engine. 
Welcome to ChromeOd 101. This week we're going to talk about the fastest door slammers in the world that actually run on a sprung suspension. These cars are approaching speeds over 250 miles an hour, have to ride on springs in the front with a strut suspension on the front and shocks in the rear. This particular strut also has a nitrogen canister to help keep the strut charged. This is going to help keep the suspension in control because when you're going down the racetrack at 250 miles an hour, you've got to be in control. So here we are in the back of the car. You notice the blue springs again? Inside those springs are the shocks. Inside of the shocks, along with those shocks, is a bump stop. That's those red items in there. That keeps the car from compressing too far down track. Because again, once again, we gotta be in control of what this car is doing. The suspension, the struts in the front, the shocks in the rear, critical to control the car. But what tells us what it's doing are the shock sensors. They're just to the inside of those shocks. There's also those same items on the front of the car. That's gonna report back our data in the data log and tell us what the car is actually doing when it's running out there at 3 G's, 250 miles an hour. Amazing statistics from these cars, but now it's time to determine the winner here in Concord, North Carolina. The Drag Race Canada magazine sponsored Chevrolet of Eric Latino takes on Danny Rowe and the Agave Underground Tequila Corvette. And in one of the best side-by-side -side races of the entire event, Danny Rowe will win for the Agave Underground Tequila team. And we still have not had one driver win more than one event this year. 24 thousandths of a second difference at the finish line. Danny Rowe, a big win at Z-Max. How big is it? It's unbelievable. You know, I got to thank my whole crew. Jimmy Rector, Junior, Daryl, Chop, Chris, Gary, I mean, these Karen, these guys work so freaking hard to help us put this thing together, and I just can't thank them enough. My family supports me, the Agave Underground people, I mean, the whole RPM series, everything that we're getting got going on, it's because of the people I have around me, and I'm very, very lucky, man, and I'm proud to have this now, and it's been a long time coming, and I'm excited about it. What better way to christen a brand new race car? But bear in mind, the point standings still show Mike Janis out in front by three rounds over Troy Coughlin, who is going to need to repair the entire Jegs.com Corvette before the next race. On behalf of myself, Brett Kepner, and Joe Costello, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next from St. Louis.